All right, it's 2014, and African Americans have achieved success across the professional spectrum, all the way up to these United States, the president of these United States. In fact, despite those realities, some African American Democrats seem to want to keep America in the 19th century mindset. It's unfortunate America doesn't deal with the problem of racism. They all come from the South, and they all have these feelings about superiority, and that's true whether you're picking cotton or whether you're president of the United States. So your racial superiority, unfortunately, is a disease that a handful of people have, and they were holding back the Republican majority in the House of Representatives. And it doesn't stop there. Tim Scott just won an historic election in South Carolina, becoming that state's first elected black senator. Representative James Clyburn, also from South Carolina, doesn't see Scott's election as a step forward, saying, quote, if you call progress electing a person with the pigmentation that he has, who votes against the interest and aspirations of 95% of the black people in South Carolina, then I guess that's progress. Well, Tim Scott wasn't about to take those thoughts from Rangel and Clyburn lying down. The South has made so much progress, and the best thing that folks like Mr. Rangel can say is that he's going to harken back to something that happened 100 years ago or 70 years ago. Let's talk about tomorrow. The lowest common denominator of fear and race baiting is something that the other party has tried to do, and the voters said no. They rejected it. So, Bobby, I mean, wow. You listen to Clyburn, you listen to Rangel. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm appalled by the whole so, thing. So, it's such as, listen, the number you take, Charlie Rangel and Clyburn, you put them on, these are guys who's, whose institutional memory of all this is the civil rights movement. The vast majority of Americans don't agree with that. The vast majority of House members and Senate candidates did not use the race card. It's a bogus argument that you guys want to bring up. It's a bogus argument that we bring up. We have two congressional black caucus members who, who play the race card against Tim Scott, it is so the bogus. first African-American senator in South Carolina. It's more bogus than you can card. possibly imagine. Uh, what's bogus is you... What it does is it makes, it, it makes a nice segment for this show. No, but our uh, representatives of your party, and when are they going to step into the future into 2014 instead of always pushing African-Americans and do, minorities wait, wait, down? They don't want to celebrate wait, well, excuse, success excuse or vote for candidates based on their qualifications and experience. They do not represent the Democratic Party. Well, they kind of represent the yes, Democratic the Black Caucus in, 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 in the House. How many other Black Caucus do. members do you hear talk about? And by the way, the, what, there's, there's, how many members of the Black Caucus on the Democratic side? I, I, and how many on the Republican side? I think the Republican side is a lot of credit. credit. I wouldn't get these guys in, but I was waiting for you to do that. You complain when there aren't enough black members in the Senate and the House, I'm, and then I'm, there are more. I'm all complain. for it. It's it 50 years too late, but I'm all for it. Danny, you said, you, you, were you surprised at Clyburn's comments? No, but I do think that just as uh, Democrats look at Republicans and say, you are going to lose the future generations of Latino voters because you haven't evolved in your thinking and in your approach to, uh, from your party, I think that words like that from Clyburn and Rangel, it, it's sounding very tired, right? Yeah. It's a past its sell-by date, and the new generation uh, doesn't think in black and white terms. Remember, that was President Obama talked about his daughters and how much progress in, in their thinking that they had made even be, um, to, from when he was a kid. So I hope that this is sort of like the last that we're going to hear of this. Tim Scott's personal story is quite astounding. Incredible. What he was able to achieve, because he had mentors and people who cared about him, much better way to encourage black people than what so they were So An amazing guy when you meet him, right? He's just, he's great. He is great. And it's, and it's not just black Democrat leaders that are using these inflammatory this rhetoric. You're right. Biden. Really? Remember the vice president, keep y'all back in chains? Yeah. How about that? Is right. that high enough on the yeah. chain for you? But here's the thing. Stay on this, because this is post-election. Right. This is in uh, months ago. I know, I, I know why they're doing it. I have a feeling I know why. Because if, if anything that threatens the, the Democrat monopoly on the black vote threatens the entire power structure of the Democrat Party. It threatens any ability to get the White House. It threatens any ability to control urban areas. It threatens money, yeah. okay. power, yeah. and they, to, they, you, they throw these buzzwords out and they try to scare blacks into uh, not trying uh, to cross uh, the line. Hang in there, guys. Yeah, i got to get Kim, Kim in before we move on to the next topic. Quick yeah, I just think that we need to try and move forward and together as a country and celebrate the accomplishments and the conversation, the understanding, and celebrate what we've seen as tremendous movements from women, from minorities, working in Congress together. Be proud of that. Don't always try and punish America and beat us up as a country. That's the and problem. You that rhetoric isn't going to work. Would you address yourself to those two people that do not represent the Democratic Party? You didn't Bobby, see Maxine Maxine Waters come out and say, what do you mean it's not fair? It's not fair. Did anybody announce them? Were there any white Democrats
denouncing their rhetoric. I didn't hear any. That is absolutely So they're, so they're okay unfair. with it. Uh, uh, Rangel's has 20, it. Bob, yeah, Rangel, not a 21 terms as, as a, a member of Congress. Clyburn's been around. He's got a high-ranking position in, in the uh, caucus as well and the Black Caucus. Stop it. That's not fair. We've got to go was, on to this. Was beat up Some badly refreshing in the Look at this Some, you never felt so Some of this. Look at this. Some refreshing perspective on the issue from two very impressive women. First, listen to former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice absolutely hit the head on the nail. Hit the nail on the head. The idea that you would play such a card and try fear-mongering among, among minorities just because you disagree right. with Republicans, that they're somehow all racist, I find it appalling, I find it insulting, and as a Republican black woman from the South, I would say to them, really? Is that really the argument that you're going to make in 2014? I've been black all my life. You don't have to tell me how to be black. And now listen to my favorite new member of elected uh, office, Representative-elect Mia Love, explain how principles trump skin color. This is historic. I said, but it's not historic uh, because of the color of my skin. It's historic because Utah has decided to elect a person based on their principles, based on values that we hold dear here. And I think that, you know, that's, that's a great thing. To, that's a great message to stand out. And I'm, I'm excited. KJ, short change in the last no, one. I was, I was good, but now, this is what's exciting to me about government, about this country, right? And I know that's how she feels, and that's how former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is. People love them because of their principles, for their passion, their patriotism, and their energy. They are not being hateful and trying to bring us back in time. That's the problem. So that's why your party, Bob, is in big trouble. Well, hang on, hang on. Let me get the ladies first. Got it, ladies right. first. <laughs> No, please, Bob, 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 I'll yield my time to you because you were shaking your head in disgust almost at Mia Love, and I was curious as to why. I'm not, to, not at her. I think it's a, it looked, I think she and Condoleezza Rice, of all of us thought Condoleezza Rice was a terrific woman, but we picked out the four things we could edit for this block, for no, this I show, mean, I, so that we could make the Democrats a bunch of racist. I, uh, I, mean, I have paid you this stuff, Bob. I have paid you this not. Greg yeah, Abbott. The idea of saying 2016, Condoleezza Rice said 2016 the Democrats are going to use the race card, and that's just bull. Uh, how about how about uh, Republicans uh, unseating a Democrat in Illinois as governor by winning 20 percent of the black vote? No one saw that coming. Isn't that good? Uh, yeah, you should. Bob, this is old, tired rhetoric. You have Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, LeBron James, a black guy in the White House, Oprah Winfrey. Once these generations keep going, no one cares about this stuff anymore. It's old news. And, the, and you know what it does? It has an effect on white voters. That's why a lot of these Democrat candidates can't win middle class white voters. Because if you keep saying everybody's racist they, and a bunch of smear racist. merchants, the Democrat party is everybody's racist. Teams, I, it offends people. We got to go. They don't want to hear it. It offends really people. You actually we believe went that way crap. over time. I apologize. Don't move because we're going to.